welcome everybody to You Can't Make This Up. And uh, listen, as usual, we have some things here to help us to wind down and wind up as the weekend is getting ready to come. So uh, I'm going to start out with this picture for y'all. So you ready? Okay, check out this picture. It is absolutely hilarious. I think a picture uh, speaks of uh, a thousand words. Is that what they say? Let's go ahead and show this first picture of the invisible art. This is great. This, if you ever feel useless, these people paid money to look at invisible art. That is classic. Thank you, Alexis from Idaho, for sending in that picture. That is great. I'm looking at that. What a great way to start the day. Hey, here's a couple of other things from the week. I don't want to forget these. So these are just honorable mention kind of things. Uh, Joe Biden has secretly flown 33,000 migrants into New York City. 326,000 into Florida at taxpayers' expense. Evil things going on from uh, going on straight from the White House, of course. No surprise to any of us. They're out to destroy this country. And check this out. Another proof that this is all planned. This is from California Insider. Activist groups pay, activist group, excuse me, pays California students. $1,400 to become social justice activists. I'm telling you, we wouldn't have these fake grassroots movements if it wasn't organizations like George Soros and the stuff that he does and puts out the thousands or actually billions of dollars, in his case, to destroy America. Listen, these people won't work. They don't have any money, but they're all told to say the exact same thing, paid 1400 bucks. Wow so they can destroy this country. Well, there we go. All right, let's get rolling with some other things. So check this out. I think you're gonna find a little bit of humor in this first story. Oh, let me do this here. It's about immigration and what do we have? We have this immigration issue where check this out. Let me see, I think this is from Texas. Let me reset this thing here. Breaking police bust immigration scheme disguised as gas station robbery. Seriously, you cannot make this up. Uh, let's see where this was. This was Houston, a robbery that had occurred in January and resulted in the death of the perpetrator was recently discovered to be staged as part of an immigration scheme. According to police, the incident, which took place at a Houston gas station, was orchestrated by Scott and William Winfrey, a man who has since confessed to planning the staged robbery. The two victims, fake victims of the robbery, who have remained unnamed, were actually complicit in the scheme and were looking to obtain temporary residency visas through the fake crime. So get that. So this is what we'll do. We'll be victims in a crime. So they set up the whole thing. We'll be victims in a crime. And then since we're victims in a crime, we'll be able to stay here in the United States of America. Well, guess what? Something went terribly wrong in this. And guess what happens? Somebody actually gets shot and killed by somebody else who was also uh, in trouble with the law anyways, and they weren't supposed to have a gun, but they did. They aren't sure what to do with him yet because he actually killed this other person. It's all a fake robbery. Somebody gets killed in the process, and it was also these people can stay in the country because, as we know, uh, the, the laws for our country are just absolutely insane when it comes to this kind of stuff, when it comes to immigration. We showed you 336,000 people Joe Biden has shipped all the way into Florida, $1,400 per student paid to cause disruptions and civil unrest and protest, 1400 bucks to protest. And now this, let's take advantage of the, the insane, um, uh, insane laws regarding immigration. Okay, let me show you something else, a little bit of insanity. Now, I fly a lot, and as most of you can probably tell, I'm not in, a, in our regular Hope for Our Times a studio or traveling right now. Um, I am anyways, uh, looking at doing some, some neat, neat things coming up uh, with you guys. But uh, as we look at this right now, I want you to think of this. I'm thinking, okay, I got to fly back home here. And the video you're about ready to see, this is a, a pilot. Check this out. This is a female pilot. Um, I think she's lost her mind. She's gone over to the DEI edge. She's gone over the cliff. I'm thinking maybe she was paid extra money by the George Soros Foundation too. But check out, this is a pilot. Check out this video, a pilot. 
Check this out. Watch this. If you don't feel safe, get off the airplane. But this is your captain go. speaking, okay. but never like this. this. I'll stop, and I will fly the airplane. Don't worry, I'm going to let my co-pilot fly it. He's a man. Okay? It's a total meltdown. The pilot okay, boarded in her safe, street clothes airplane, and addressed the passengers go. over the okay. intercom. Passenger Pam O'Neill couldn't believe what was happening. She said, let's take a vote. How many of you would like to take off now with me dressed as I am? Or would you prefer that I take 10 minutes to get changed into my cute little uniform? Then she started talking okay. about her divorce and political candidates. Okay. And the minute she mentioned that, um, a gentleman stood up and just yelled, whoa. Enough, you're scaring me. Another passenger, Randy Reese, got up to leave and gave a running commentary on social media. Pilot also insulted a couple on board. Did I offend you? Okay, so did I purposely offend you? I did. The answer is yes. Flight attendants, please disarm doors. After 20 passengers insisted on getting off the United Airlines flight, the pilot quietly left the aircraft. Okay, if you don't feel safe, get off the airplane. I'd be saying, I don't feel safe. I'm getting off that airplane. That is just insane. This world's gone mad. That's a pilot. And then I guess she's gone. So what, what I mean, look at this. You go, what in the world's going on? Hey, check this out. We're going to be in Lake Stevens near Seattle coming up. In just a couple of weeks, I'll be up there with Dr. Billy Crone, uh, Pablo Fursini, Eric Barger. Check it out at HopeForOurTimes.com. If you're in the area, it's just a little bit north of Seattle, Lake Stevens up in Washington. Love to meet you guys there. I do believe there's registration for the conference. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. going to be an absolutely terrific time. Uh, be there Friday and Saturday. And then also, if you want to join us in the fall, we have a Footsteps of the Apostle Paul conference that's coming up. It's going to be a terrific conference. Please uh, make plans. It's an educated, an education uh, tour is what it really is. If you've been to Israel on a tour, you kind of know what to expect, if, especially if you've been with me. It's going to be an absolutely terrific time. And my friend, Pastor Bob Probert, he is my co-host on this. And uh, Bob is just a, 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 just absolutely terrific wealth of knowledge and understanding. A lot of fun to listen to. Uh, so you're going to get to go to these great places like Ephesus, Athens, Corinth, and uh, the island of Patmos. Of course, that's where John was, not the Apostle Paul, where John wrote the book of Revelation. Many other places we're going to be visiting, and you're going to be with like-minded people. We're going to be able to link arms, strengthen one another, and you're going to love it. The Bible is going to come to life like it does when you go to Israel and you go to those places, you read your Bible, you go, wow, you can see things in a way you've never seen things before and have an understanding that is right. Same thing with this. We're going to go to different places that you wouldn't do on an Israel tour. And uh, the Bible, again, is going to be just like that. It's going to take 2D to 3D and 4D. You're going to see the places. You're going to have those, those aha moments. You're going to get it. And you're going to have a blast. So check it out. HopeForOurTimes.com, go to the website, and I uh, hope that you can join us uh, Join us there. And then also joining me on Monday is going to be Alex Newman uh, uh, this coming Monday. So I'll be Sunday morning, Sunday evening, live with you guys, and then um, Monday with Alex Newman. All right, uh, let's get going to a couple other things. Oh, we got to see this. All right, some of y'all know Benny Hinn, right? So I like this Mike Winger. I really enjoy Mike Winger's his podcast. Uh, terrific. Uh, but uh, check this out. Mike Winger has a few things to say about uh, Benny Hinn, like friends don't let friends listen to Benny Hinn. Check out this video. It's worth checking out. I think it's an offense to the Lord to say, give $1,000. I will never again ask you to give 1000 or whatever amounts because I think the Holy Ghost is just fed up with it. And I'm going to ask you to give... And I will give over a thousand dollars of them to you. God cannot trust you with the wealth of sinners and the abundance coming with your ten dollar donation. You insult him. I'm grateful that God uses Benny Hinn, but I think Satan uses him a lot more. You might get saved listening to Benny Hinn as he talks about Jesus and as he preaches the parts of at least the gospel. But that doesn't make it okay to promote or suggest or support or encourage. You know, friends don't let their friends listen to Benny Hinn. The fact that God can use something that's distorted doesn't make the distorted thing good. That's all I'm saying there. God can use these things, but they're too dangerous and too much of a mixed bag and they should be avoided. There you go. Friends don't let friends listen to Benny Hinn. 
I mean, you look at that and you go, that's the reality of it. And uh, listen, you, you look at something like that and you go, the absurdity of these things and the direction that, uh, that, that things are going in this world. Listen, what we need is the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Now let's go. I'm going to take a little, uh, a short little reminder of what's going on in Israel because there's so much anti-Semitism that's going on out there. As you know, it's only increasing. It's only getting worse as Israel has continued to be blamed for the atrocities that have come upon them as they're dealing with Hamas. And we have this unbelievable spin that is uh, anti-Semitic, no matter what anybody says. The whole world seems to be coming against Israel right now, which may, leads me to believe that uh, we are so close to hearing the trumpet of being called home. But we need to be ready. We need to be pressing forward. We need to be able to proclaim the truth. There's so much pressure now against you, against me, to not stand with Israel. But let's look at, these are some facts that were spoken of by Bill Clinton. When was this? This was many years ago. This was, uh, I'm thinking it was 2016. I can't remember what year this is. Let's see. We'll roll this video. And here he is. He says the truth about Hamas. Check it out. Depends on whether you care what happens to the Palestinians as opposed to the Hamas government and the people with guided missiles. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. No, wait a minute. Yes, they were. And Hamas is really smart. When they decide to rocket Israel, they insinuate themselves in the hospitals, in the schools, in the highly populous areas, and they are smart. So they try, so they, wait, 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 they, so they try to put the Israelis in a position of either not defending themselves or killing innocents. They're good at it. They're smart. They've been doing this a long time. Look, I don't agree. I killed myself to give the Palestinians a state. I had a deal they turned down that would have given them all of Gaza, wait, wait, all of Gaza, between 96 and 97 percent of the West Bank, compensating land in Israel, you name it. So there you go. Uh, Bill Clinton, well, he spoke the truth then regarding the facts on Hamas. They're an evil, wicked terror organization. But let's face facts. Folks, this is a spiritual battle we are in, and all the world is turning against Israel. And uh, unbelievable to watch what is taking place. Nevertheless, it is a sign of the times that we live in. And here's another sign of the times. Check out Fetterman, what Fetterman said. Of all people, Fetterman, John Fetterman is talking sense into what's going on. Look at this. Squatters have no rights. How can you even pretend that this is anything other than you're just breaking the law? That's regarding the squatter stuff that's going on here, especially in places like New York. We've all seen it. And here's, I mean, people, squatters going into a house. And all of a sudden, they have rights. The owner of the house has to pay out money to keep the squatters in so they can still have air conditioning, so they can still have hot water. You should see one of the stories. I'm not going to play it for you right now, but unbelievable. So they can still have hot water. The owner of the house has to pay the, for the squatters to live in comfort. Unbelievable. And you have a guy like John Fetterman that's speaking sense into this. Listen, we have senseless people on both sides of the aisle. Unbelievable. Where John Fetterman becomes the one talking sense. Wow. Then you know something's up. And Bill Clinton just spoke the truth. Of course, that was only one instance with Bill Clinton speaking truth. And that was several years ago. So we know how that rolls. All right. Check this out. Um, San Francisco. Look at this. This, this is just evidence. Let me show you this. This from Zero Hedge, this article here, evidence of the facts that they really are up to something. Secretive experiment to shoot aerosols into the sky over San Francisco to increase cloud cover. A secretive project. You should see the pictures. I wish I could show them to you of all of the, the you know, the, 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 the stuff that's going on, all this chemical spraying that's going on that people say it's not really going on well it really is a secretive project conducted from the deck of an aircraft carrier in the san francisco bay will soon will shoot trillions of aerosol particles into the sky to increase cloud cover 
in the name of preventing global warming and details have been held back to avoid public backlash. So people say this stuff isn't going on. Folks, this stuff is going on. And, and this is all under the name of global warming. We're going to, listen, I'll tell you, you want to know something? I'll tell you when it's going to really get hot. During the tribulation period, when you have the bull judgments that are coming upon the planet, there's going to be real global warming at that time. When the sun scorches people who have received the mark of the beast and, and it burns their skin, and that, that's going to be real global warming. Listen, right now, the people who are in charge of this stuff, they are using these the, 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 the lies of global warming and climate change. They're using all of these lies in order to manipulate the masses. They put people into fear. That's going to give them their power. You have the 17 sustainable goals of the, the UN's Agenda 2030. And you start looking at all these different, you got the DEI things and the DIE, DIE things and all these different things that are going on, right? That they're cramming down everybody's throat. This is about confusing people. It's about gaslighting people, about giving them power, saying that uh, boys are girls and girls are boys and cats are dogs and fish and everything else. And people are now cats. People are dogs. Stuff's just totally insane. It's, it's They're gaslighting. They're bringing in mass confusion. And know this, God is not the author of confusion. Satan is the author of confusion. So that's what's going on here. And once they receive their power, like Revelation chapter 17 tells us, with the 10 kings and antichrist once they receive their power from the harlot system they're going to use that they're going to destroy the harlot system because the antichrist isn't going to allow anybody to be worshiped but himself and then they're going to be because they're going to achieve their power base through the lies that they're selling all of the people because they know the climate laws are a bunch of lies they know the dei stuff is just a bunch of lies they really know that boys have boy parts and girls have girl parts they know that stuff but they're cramming everything down everybody's throat because Satan is the author of confusion and Satan is building his kingdom and he will use these destructive things to destroy everything. Hence, what are they doing? Have the open borders, bringing millions of people across the border, destroying the cities here in America. Listen, as I'm out here driving around the country today and you see all these apartments are going up in the middle of nowhere. Why? Why? Because guess what? They're going to be putting people into these places I guarantee you what they're going to be putting in here. Illegal people, not legal people. Illegal aliens are going to put in there. And if you say anything, it's just a matter of time before uh, your, your, your misinformation and disinformation. And we're going to have to shut you up and we're going to have to throw you in jail. It was a George Orwell, 1984, who said, hey, there's coming a day when telling the truth will become a revolutionary act. And friends... We have hit that place where telling the truth has become a revolutionary act. But they really are doing this in San Francisco. And it's not just San Francisco. They're doing this throughout the country. They're doing this kind of thing all over the world. Hey, by the way, speaking of DEI and the DEI pilot, let me show you this real short video. This ought to cause you a little bit about a, a little bit of concern if you're flying anywhere. I, need, I think I need to fly less and less, by the way. So check out this video. Look at this airplane. So there you go. That, imagine you're flying and part of the plane starts coming apart. You're going, you got to wonder, was that a DEI hire that put that plane part on there or that inspected it or whatever? We have doors that fall off, windows that pop out, now engines are falling apart, wings are falling apart. And a DEI pilot, doesn't that give you confidence flying? Wow, this is great. I can't wait to get on my next plane while all along. You got companies like American Airlines who've given me terrible service, which I like to say a lot more on that. They don't listen to me. They don't listen to anybody. But that's another story. And I have to fly with them sometimes, which is a bummer, becoming more and more of a bummer. All right, check this out. Let me go to this. Um, and this is, again, this is classic. So this is an attack on Trump and not voting for Trump but really, it, it turns out to be the best Trump ad, the best some of the best advertisement he could possibly get. Whether or not you like Trump, hey, this is good material for him, meant to destroy him. It just 
lifts him up in the eyes of the people because he's promising to come and fix everything. Check out what they're trying to do to, to Trump in the ad, but it's a total backfire. This is great. Let's roll this anti-Trump ad that's really turns the opposite. What Trump will actually do if he gets back into office, you don't have to speculate because he calls his plan Agenda 47. And spoiler alert, it's scary as sh. Here's some of the worst ideas we're in store for if he wins in November. One, attacking immigration. Trump's anti-immigration policies will be even worse the second time around. He's promised to end birthright citizenship, enlist an army to round up and deport millions of undocumented immigrants and deploy thousands of US troops to the Southern border. Two, criminalizing LGBTQIA plus Americans. Trump says he'll ban gender affirming care for trans kids and prevent schools from helping kids through their transition. He wants to forbid schools from even teaching anything about sex and gender that diverges from the far right's idea of the nuclear family. Three, overhauling education. Agenda 47 includes huge changes to the education system. He wants to give huge benefits for homeschooling to indoctrinate kids with Christian nationalism, incentivize teachers to carry guns in their classrooms, further crack down on affirmative action, and destroy crucial DEI departments at colleges and universities. Four, restoring racist crime policies. Criminal legal system reform will be off the table if Trump becomes president. He promised to bring back racist policies like stop and frisk and other ineffective and discriminatory tough on crime tactics that have failed in the past. He also wants to increase protections for power abusing police while rolling back hard fought for reforms and institute the death penalty for low level crimes like drug dealing. Five, weaponizing the government. The scariest part might be Trump's threat to more or less dismantle the federal government. If he gets back in office, he's going to purge anyone who could possibly stand up to him and replace with so yeah that is like the best as dinesh d'souza says that's probably the best campaign ad trump could have going for him right now with the things that he's going to do dismantle the federal government i love it all of those different things this sounds good i look at this i go regardless if you like trump or not you still look at that and you go listen this world has gone insane this country has gone insane we have insane leaders i mean who would have thought so it's, you can't make this up Thursday. So what do we have? John Fetterman, Bill Clinton, the anti-Trump ad that becomes the Trump ad. And now, last but not least, Warren Buffett. What's Warren Buffett say? So regardless of what you think of all these different things going on here, you look at this, this is you can't make this up. Check out what Warren Buffett has to say. This is great. Look at this. This is just a quote from him. Warren Buffett, I could end the $32 trillion USA dead in five minutes. You know, he says, do it. Basically, fire everybody in Congress if they don't fix it. Fire them all. Get rid of them. That would end it all. It's great. It's worth watching the video. I'm not going to show you the video right now. But you guys get the idea. Just fire the whole lot of them, which I think would be terrific. And back to Alexis from Idaho, who sent me the other picture that we opened up with. We'll close it with this one from Alexis from Idaho also. Here it is. The Wizard of Oz is 85 years old. If Dorothy ran into men with no brains, heart, or courage today, she wouldn't be in Oz. She'd be in Washington, D.C. Ain't that the truth? Hey, thank you for joining me today. Uh, listen, if you can, go with us. Footsteps of the Apostle Paul with myself and Pastor Bob Probert. Going to be absolutely terrific. It's free to check out. Go to HopeForOurTimes.com. Check it out there. We also have the You Can't Make This Up shirts, the Wokeism shirts, the Hope For Our Times shirts, and just different things. If, you, uh, if you're if you interested in uh, checking out the store while you're there, see some of the books and videos that we have available, too. And then also Alex Newman is going to be joining me on Monday. And we have Sunday morning, Sunday night covered for you guys too. God bless you guys. And uh, talk to you soon. Hey, do me a favor. Pray as I come on a plane to go back home. Maybe I should drive because I'm kind of concerned about the DEI stuff going on. And I'm really, really tired of flying. Stuff's just nuts. Just nuts. Okay. God bless you, everybody.